Hello and welcome to another tier list. Today, we are looking at adult comedy cartoons. Now, I haven't included the ones from like Netflix, so don't expect Bo Jackman Horse whatever or Big Mouth or any of that other crap. I went with stuff that you'd find on like Cartoon Network's Adult Swim, Comedy Central, or you know, local network affiliates like NBC. That's what we're looking at. And of course, tier lists on this channel involve math and algebra these days, so we had a formula for this. We based these shows on four categories, animation style, humor, storytelling ability, and cultural impact. Animation style doesn't mean it's well animated, like it doesn't have to be good, it just has to have a style that's appealing and just generally has purpose, it's not ugly or just gross or unpleasant to look at. Humor is very subjective and it's 40% of the grade, so there you go. Storytelling ability, what I mean by this is can you tell a coherent story? Do you know what a plot structure is? Are you able to make dramatic moments happen? And then cultural impact, which is the lowest percentage but still in here, is perhaps you're a show that's run a little too long, <laughs> but your cultural impact is undeniable and you've had some good stuff along the way. That's what that score is. Each of them are scaled from 1 to 5, so animation style on a scale of 1 to 5, humor, etc, etc. You plug in that mathematical equation formula and it will spit out a percentage. I'll put it on the screen for you as far as the formula and crap for numbers. And anyway, if you're new to the channel, I make other content, music, and crap like that. You should check it out. I don't care if you think I'm whack. One more time for the people in the back. I don't care if you think I'm whack. We're not alike, but run the same track. Come to think as a matter of fact, you run the sprints while I'm facing laps. And that's the plug. Let's get into this mathematical day. I call it mathematical. Uh, all said and done, I'm looking at these shows as a whole. And so it's not like, oh, Family Guy used to be good and Simpsons used to be good. Now they're this. No, I'm looking at everything they've done. The good, the bad, and the ugly. One bad episode, one bad season does not ruin a show, but it needs to be taken into consideration as far as the library of works. And that'll impact some shows more than others, depending on how much crap they've released that wasn't good. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting with American Dad. American Dad is a great show. It scored in at a 76%. Yeah, if you don't watch American Dad, you probably should. It's pretty hilarious. Roger Smith is a wonderful character, and this is Seth MacFarlane at his best, whereas Family Guy, it's been a long time since Family Guy was a good representation of Seth MacFarlane being actually entertaining. Aqua Teen Hunger Force comes in at bad, at 48%. Some people really like this show, but I don't find it very funny. The art style is ugly. It's not just South Park. South Park, there's a certain charm to the bad animation. That is not present here. It's just bad and ugly and hard to look at. Archer, Archer comes in at good. It's not my favorite show I've watched, but the animation style is interesting. It's, it's there, it's good, why not? Beavis and Butthead is in the same category. I think Beavis and Butthead Do America is my favorite thing to have come out of Beavis and Butthead. And if the show was more like that movie, I'd probably have the show a lot higher up. But the show just oftentimes didn't know where it was going. It was, I don't know, something else. King of the Hill is a much better representation of the work that uh, Mr. Judge can put out. Burgers and fries from Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers came in with a score of 86%, putting it right into the awesome category. Bob's Burgers is a little gem that many people don't appreciate, but it's a, it is a very quirky show with great characters, surprisingly good musical numbers when they want it to have those, a lot of depth built into its little universe. It's a very good show. Not a lot of people give Bob's Burgers the love it deserves. Brickleberry. Brickleberry uh, was almost trash, except for it has it has some funny moments, so it's just bad. Just because Brickleberry could sometimes make you laugh, it's bad. But it's don't watch Brickleberry. It's not a good show. It's very gross at times, but that's about it. The Cleveland Show is meh. Which I mean, that should be self-explanatory. It's like eh, it's there. 
I guess this show's on. It came in at a 56%. And uh, yeah, it's right there in the meh light. Then you get Family Guy. Family Guy has had a lot of ups, a lot of downs. At the end of the day, it ended up in the good category at around a 66%. Just because there's a lot of good that Family Guy has done in the past, I will always state American Dad is a better show all around. It has better characters, better humor, better pacing, better tone. Pretty much everything about American Dad is better than Family Guy when you look at their whole library of works. Yes, you could say, well, Family Guy had like such a few amazing seasons. Congratulations. Family Guy's got hundreds of episodes and about 30 of them are top shelf, but there's still hundreds of episodes and most of them are trash. So as a all around show, American Dad is better, so suck it. Then you get Futurama. Futurama is a fucking masterpiece. Futurama, I believe, I'm not looking at everything right now, I'm looking at one score at a time, but I believe Futurama has the highest score on this list at a 96%, almost perfect, didn't have much of a cultural impact, that kind of set it back a little bit, but my goodness, even when the show fell flat, it was still better than most shows on this list when they're having a pretty good episode. Futurama was something else, I don't know how that show pulled off what it did, but it's just watch Futurama if you haven't. Okay, okay. Home movies. You might not have heard of this. This was one of the original Adult Swim cartoons, and it was awful. Trash. Nothing I liked about this show. It was ugly to look at. It wasn't funny. The plots never made sense. The voice acting was uninspired. It, no. It, bad. Don't watch. King of the Hill is awesome. It ranks in at a sweet, cool 84%. Uh, it has some really good storylines, very likable characters, dynamic events that happen. It kind of got a little tired as it went on, but I would actually like to see King of the Hill in 2020 because it always had really good centrist political commentary told from the perspective of an apparently right-winged man, but somehow the politics were always very centrist in that show, which I appreciated because there's not a lot of centrist representation in comedy. Sometimes it was a little more on the right wing, but typically it wasn't. Typically it was closer to moderate centrist on its politics, and most of these shows address politics either frequently or occasionally, and it was a rare political take that was refreshing that came from King of the Hill. That was one of the things that was that made it charming for everyone from any political side because they made fun of everybody. Then you have Mike Tyson Mysteries. Mike Tyson Mysteries. It's actually good. It's got like an adult Scooby-Doo vibe to it. It's uh, It came in at like a nice little 66% piece there. It's fine. Mr. Pickles was very close to trash, but it came in at bad just because sometimes that show's gross out humor is kind of funny. And the art style is actually pretty impressive. It's, it, it's gross and scary, but it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. If you don't know what Mr. Pickles is, it's a satanic dog that's like murdering people and only the grandpa knows and it's just it's shenanigans. Don't worry about it. The Oblongs. This was with Will Ferrell and this show was utter garbage. Ugly to look at. Not funny. Annoying. What was Will Ferrell doing? I know some people like this show, but I'm sorry. No. This show was just painful to watch. Now we get to Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty comes in at a masterpiece as well with a 94% score. Rick and Morty might end up becoming trash as it goes on, you never know, but so far we've gotten pretty much nothing but like top shelf quality every episode of that show. They're good at storytelling when they want to get a little more serious, the humor's hilarious, the animation's pretty cool, it's obviously had a huge cultural impact, so it checks all the boxes to get right up there. Then you have Robot Chicken, the stop animation, stop motion animated action figures, fart jokes, and death jokes. It's enjoyable. It's it's pretty okay, but it's nothing special. Just because it's funny is really the only thing that, that carried it, but it's gotten a lot less funny over the years. It just sits in meh. It used to be good, if not even great. But as time has gone on, and they've still made more episodes, it's just like, alright, the the appeal has worn well off. I used to have this, like, up here, but it just, it really just got old. 
Then you have The Simpsons. The Simpsons. The Simpsons is a show that falls into great as well. It, even though has had a lot of seasons and a lot of questionable stuff, it has a, a huge legacy. Its movie is still hilarious. The show recently is not any good, but because they have like probably a good 300 good episodes in their four or 500 episode catalog at this point, that's still a pretty good track record. They just have so many that it's easy to find terrible episodes, but it's been going for like 30 years. Cut them a little bit of slack. It's still a still a great show. I, I'm not going to get too much into any new episodes, but if you watch one, you'll probably laugh a few times. And I mean, if you've been going for 30 years and still could crack a few jokes, I mean, bravo, I guess. Then you have South Park, undoubtedly another masterpiece by Matt Stone and Trey Parker. If they have a bad season, they're so good at just resetting and doing a new concept for a new season. For two guys that honestly don't care that much about South Park anymore, they've still turned out like great quality content, especially since they spend like two weeks making an episode. Something about that show. It's hilarious. They they hold no punches. They go after everybody. It's wonderful. Good job, South Park. Then you have Squidbillies. If you know what this is, I'm sorry. It's also utter trash. Trash, trash, trash. And finally, the last one I have on this list is Super Jail. And Super Jail actually gets in the mech category because I don't know if you've ever watched Super Jail, but it could get pretty entertaining. Uh, it's, it's horrendous to watch because it's so gory and gross, but if you could get past that, like it's actually had some pretty funny moments and the art is actually extremely well done for what nastiness it is. But uh, yeah, that's that's my list. I know there's a lot of cartoons that fall into this category. I didn't touch on even aside from the Netflix cartoons, whatever. Drop them in the comments and where you would have put them in my ranking based on the four categories. Tell me what you think. What shows do you like? What shows did I throw in the trash that you're like, but I love that show? Or what shows did I put really high that you're like, that show's trash, whatever. Argue about it in the comments like a bunch of grown adults arguing about cartoons would. And until next time for our next tier list Thursday next week i scheme you scheme we all scheme for ice cream bye